What's up guys, it's Chrome Effects Films here and today I'm going to give you guys another uh, interesting tutorial. Um, since I am a big fan of particle effects and I uh, make a lot of them in my spare time, um, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make certain types of particle effects. Um, on my store on Game Prefabs, I do have a water fountain available, but I'm going to show you guys how to make a uh, the top part where the water actually comes out from the center. Um, this is what the effect's going to look like in the end. Um, the part where the splashes are, I'm going to I'm going to leave that part for another video, um, maybe. But I'm just going to teach you guys how to do this top part today. And Unity um, now has a completely new uh, particle system, which makes um, your particles 50 times better because it's so much. Uh, it has so much more than the original and it's a lot more complex uh, and, and even I am still trying to get used to it and learn how to use it but I know a little bit about it to make a water fountain so I'll just get started so I'll just uh, delete this and first thing you're going to do is go to uh, game object create other and then particle system and then you're going to get this this is their uh, new default particle system instead of the uh, ugly sphere one and we're gonna start by making this duration one and uh, let me explain a little bit about what that does uh, what you can do is have it have the particle kind of spraying in bursts so you can make it start stop start stop so if you had a fountain you can make it like run for two seconds and then stop and then start running again just automatic and that's and it doesn't require any uh, scripting at all so we're not gonna have any start delay but the start lifetime, we're going to put this at 3.5 seconds because that's about the, uh, the amount of time it takes for the water to go up and come back down around uh, surface level, and that's where it's going to disappear. Okay, um, the start speed, we're going to change this to 8. And you can see this will go a lot faster, but we'll fix that. The start size, we want these particles to be a little bit bigger than they are, so we'll keep it at 1.7. Uh, we'll leave the start uh, rotation to nothing. Um, gravity, we're going to put that at point 15. Hmm, the inherent velocity, we're going to uh, keep us at 1. To simulate in world space, uh, this is basically um, if you want your particle to be affecting, uh, if you tell it to move down on the y-axis, if it's locally, if you have the particle effect rotated like this, as you can see, it's still moving up, but according to this axis, not the actual world axis. And if I change it to um, world, no matter where I rotate this, uh, oh, uh, oh yeah, well, no matter where I, okay, sorry guys. Um, basically, it just changes whether it's gonna move when you move an object with it that's attached to or is it actually just going to stay there and then move with the world which the world doesn't move um, okay it's acting a little bit different than last time but if you play around with it you'll uh, figure it out okay um, next we're going to move on to a mission and we're going to keep this at 150 because we're going to need a lot more particles there you go that looks great okay let's open this up see this is alright this is good bursts yeah no we're not touching any of that okay the shape of it, we're going to keep this at a cone, but we're going to uh, change the angle. So this is actually a cool feature, so you can change the angle. Uh, I'm going to keep it at about mm, 6.6. 6.6 .6 is good. All right. And the radius is going to have to be 0.2. So it automatically looks like that it's actually uh, going outward. Okay, um, we're going to turn on, we're going to check rotation by speed, and the angular velocity is going to have to be 100. Um, the speed range, let's keep this at uh, 0.99. Or why not, you know, let's just keep it 1. Alright, uh, color over lifetime. This is basically, you can have the particles fade out at the end, and, and as you can see, they're just disappearing at the top. That does not look very nice. Are very pretty so we're gonna open up the color tab and then this is the the new particle uh, the gradient editor where 
this bottom, these two, bottom two tabs are the color, and then these top two is like the alpha channel, so you can make it transparent at the end. So I'm going to click this top right one, and I'm going to make the alpha zero. So as you can see, it's already fading out at the top. And then you can move it and see, you know, whenever you want to start fading out. Uh, it's like a normal gradient slider if you guys know how to use those in like Photoshop uh, or basically any pretty decent uh, photo editor program or paint editor. Uh, this it'll have this option. Um, we're gonna keep the color. We're gonna change this color to a little bit gray. And yeah, you know what? Actually, let's keep it white. It doesn't look very nice like that. We'll do that with materials. Okay. <sighs> <clears throat> so we're also going to um, check the force over lifetime, and we're going to make it on the y-axis negative three. Oh, yes, but now we got to change the space to a world, so it actually goes down. There you go. Okay, now we got a, a nice water fountain feel here, but it's white and it has no uh, material. So I already created a material for a water fountain from the preview, but I'm just going to create it again. So I'm going to delete it. Here it is. I'll just make it again, show you guys. Okay, so create a new material. We're gonna call it Water Fountain. And then we're gonna find the texture foam. Drag it on there. We're gonna change its um, shader to Additive Soft. And then we're going to find it. All right, there you go. And we're gonna drag it on there. And there you go. Hmm. All right, we can uh, tweak it a bit. It's having it has a lot of particles, uh, and they're rotating, and there you go. Hmm. Wait a minute, there's something in the center that keeps shooting up. If you can see that, hmm, it might be this. Ah, uh, nope, that's not it. Okay, there you go. Uh, it's this duration thing again. Every four seconds, it'll launch at that little. You know. Okay, just uh. Change this to whatever amount you want. I'm just going to change it to 15 since I don't really want to see that. <laughs> and uh, there you go, guys. This is your basic fountain system. Uh, I hope uh, you guys uh, enjoyed this tutorial. And I hope to see these uh, fountains in your game. Comment, comment on my video and, and send me a link to your videos. I'd love to see what you guys do with this stuff in your games. So last step, we're going to name it Water Fountain. And as you can see, I added the uh, underscore here because um, it's better in, in uh, programming and scripting. Uh, in the scripts, if you have your objects named like this and you have this underscore in there, um, you can access the game object into the scripts and make it like, you know, emit and uh, enable and disable and all that stuff. But um, because scripting usually uh, uh, you can't have any spaces um, or maybe you can but it's a good habit to add these underscores in there or you can just do it like this and add no spaces but it looks nicer like this so it's a good habit to get into and um, yeah thanks guys and yeah <sighs> see you guys